Today is a bit of a different one. I wanted to talk about something that I feel very passionate about, and that's older video games. Now, I feel the same way with older movies. However, for some reason, I feel like there's not the same stigma around them. When it comes to old video games, retro games, or even just games, I would say, over 10 to 15 years old, there is a rather large contingent of gamers who is very averse to them, who does not want to play them, does not want to try them because they aged poorly or because the technology has come a long way since then and they want to play the newest thing. I've never really been a fan of the newest thing uh, on its own merit uh, for being new. If something is new and good, that's one thing to me. But if something is just new, that does literally nothing for me at all. I find myself spending more time on things like my Xbox Series X or even my PC playing games that are actually older, probably older than at least five years. And looking at some of my favorite games, games like the original Dark Souls that came out in 2011, a more niche game like Mega Man Legends 2 from 2000, Pokemon Crystal also 2000, Final Fantasy 7 from 1997, Fallout New Vegas from 2010, Jack and Daxter, a series that started in 2001 and continued for a while before uh, petering out, and even Skyrim from 2011. Those games all share one thing in common, and that's that none of them, really, that I can see, are within 10 years of now, right? And that doesn't mean new games are bad. There are fantastic new games. Games like Marvel's Spider-Man, games like the Demon Souls remake, games like, uh, you know, the new Halo Infinite. People love Halo Infinite. There are new games that are really great and fun. But, you know, I think that it's ridiculous to just discount something for being old. When we look at movies... Some of people's favorite movies are usually older movies, things like classic Star Wars. I know Blade Runner comes up a lot in the uh, in the sci-fi fandom, you know, classic horror for horror fans, things like the original Halloween. Nobody really talks about, well, it's old, so it's bad, but I see this all the time with gaming, and I really don't understand it. I've also seen it on the other side where people worship old things and they talk about how bad everything is after like the year 2000 and how nothing can be good. I don't really agree with that either. I think that's like the ultimate hipster moment opinion. But I really dislike this idea as well on the other side that just because something is more than five or ten years old, it's worthless. You know, one of my favorite parts of gaming in the last few years has been things like uh, the Xbox Series X FPS Boost program. I talked about this, I believe, last year where they went back and improved a ton of games and made them run a lot smoother. Some of those games are even easier to run smoother on console than they are on something like PC. A good example of that would be Assassin's Creed 3. However, there's also a fundamental laziness and lack of respect when it comes from a lot of game developers and gamers for games like this. You know, the idea is essentially, well, we could just remaster something and put it out. That can be 30 FPS, whatever, upscale it a little bit, put some textures on there, there we go. You see these things like the GTA Enhanced Trilogy, which is essentially just glorified mobile phone ports, ports of GTA 3, San Andreas, and Vice City. But one thing that upsets me about this is people still play GTA 3, San Andreas, and Vice City, especially those latter two games of the three. People still play those. People are still chomping at the bit to play them on PC. People are chomping at the bit to get discs and play them on an Xbox. You know, people want to go back and experience these games. And more and more every year, you see appreciation for some of these things. I think GTA 4 is another great example of that, where people go back and look at some of the details in that game. And not that 5 isn't impressive, but they've seen 5 re-releases, you know, or 500 re-releases of GTA 5, and they go back and look at 4, and they say, wow, there were some things in this game that were actually better than they were in 5. You know, I think that this is a really common theme. I know for my wife, Jill, one of her favorite genres of games was actually point and click, which is a game that's pretty dead now. Things like mystery games like Nancy Drew and other stuff like that, you know, she was a really big fan of. And I can even think of, off the top of my head, a dozen Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games that aged perfectly, that work perfectly well now. I guess I don't really understand where this attitude comes from and why it's been sort of proliferated. You know, this is the... 
This is the same attitude of as soon as a new console comes out, you have to sell your previous one and get rid of it. I understand if it's a money situation. I'm not memeing. I'm not being mean here. You know, I've had those myself where it's like, oh, well, the Switch comes out. Maybe I can't afford that. Maybe you trade in a previous system with games or you sell them on Craigslist or some other marketplace and you get money for that and you buy the new thing because you're excited. Totally get it. But this idea that on its own, just because something's older than 10 years or 15 years or 20 years that it's bad, I don't, I just don't understand it. Some of my favorite games that have the most heart are definitely old games. You know, I talked about the first Dark Souls. Why do you think that that game actually spawned a whole series? Why do you think there is a whole subgenre of games called Soulsborne games or Souls-like games that try and capture the essence of what made that game good? It's because that game, despite coming out in 2011, it really captured a fantasy exploration setting and it didn't hold your hand. You know, in an age of waypoints, in an age of guiding you from place to place and telling you what to do, Dark Souls just kind of said, sorry, dude, you're on your own. Figure it out. You know, and that was something new. That was something exciting for people at the time that even though it had been a precedent for decades in gaming, had mostly faded out of the limelight at the time, and it's something people still want. It's not about the age of when a game came out, it's about the heart behind it, what it did, what was impressive about it, and even more than that, admittedly, who were you, and what were you experiencing when you first played that game? If you're somebody who is going for, through a really, really nasty divorce, and you're playing a game, you know... I don't know, Fallout, Fallout 2, let's say, uh, leading up to your divorce, that game might have some negative connotations and some negative feelings for you. It's not on the merit of itself as a game, right? We all have this. You know, I think that one of the first games like that for me was Final Fantasy VII in 1997. That game for me, it did not age the best. If you look at its technical specs, if you look at the graphics, if you look at especially the... Uh, overworld graphics and being out on on the map itself, the in-game map, running around. These characters are very ridiculously looking and very, very... You can see the polygons. You can see the shapes. It's basically like Geometry Wars the person when you look at Cloud or Tifa or any of these people. But what did this game do that captured the hearts and minds of people, especially when they were younger? Beautiful character writing very interesting world, a mixture of fantasy and medieval elements with technology, a dystopian world that you were kind of dropped into and having to take part in. What did Fallout New Vegas do better than Fallout 4, Fallout 76, and even some of its earlier entries? Amazing heart, character storytelling, a world that was very interesting that you got to take part in and shape around you and change the lives of other characters in the game and go on quests and explore. Why is Skyrim released every other month on your mother's toaster? It's the same thing. You know, people want those senses of exploration and discovery and playing a game, right? They don't really, at their core, want a disposable experience. If you could ask anybody, and I truly believe this, if you could ask anybody, even people who buy the new Madden every year, even people who buy the new NBA every year, if you could give them the option to buy it once, right, for five years, and they'll keep adding to the roster, they'll keep updating the stadiums, they'll keep adding in new gameplay stats, maybe even allow you to play... Let's say you want to play as the Miami Heat in NBA. I know I'm losing a lot of you here, but just hear me out because I think it's a decent example. Maybe you want to play as them from 2012. Maybe you want to play as them from 2013 with those stats and those players and stuff like that. Instead of buying a disposable experience and getting a new one next year and a new one the year after that and the previous ones getting abandoned. That's how people really feel, I believe, deep down. Most gamers about video games. It's not that they don't want new ones, it's that they don't necessarily want the old ones to be treated like they're disposable trash, that they should just be thrown out. And I think that one thing that really doesn't help this, and I'm going to wrap this up because I don't want to make this just a ramble video, but one thing that really doesn't help this is the retro gaming market in general. You know, with things like Xbox backwards compatibility, I think there has been some fixing of this. You know, being able to buy games that are actually 
enhanced and fixed up for a modern platform but they're older games or put your disc in and download an update that then allows you to play that game with even something like Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic on the Series X. That's really awesome. But I think one thing that sucks with older technology that's really hurt it is that people know there's heart there. They know that there's a reason why people gravitate towards a lot of older things, and they do exploit that. You know, you see this all the time with the retro gaming market purposely jacking up prices, people contacting each other to purposely raise the price of certain games. I even saw there was a very interesting video on this a while back on retro gaming. I believe it was done by Mudahar from Some Ordinary Gamers, where he sort of talked about this this thing where these people will sort of get together and try and set the prices on this stuff and jack it up because they know that there's like a heart and soul in that game that people want to experience now, but they can't unless they get the disc, right? Something like Final Fantasy VII before it got all its modern ports. It was sort of like that, where people went looking for that disc because they really wanted to experience that for what it was. But the problem is there's a lot of people who are willing to exploit that, and then I think that's also off-putting. I also think that this is on developers. It's on, and I don't want to say individual developers, like, you know, Sam Smith. I know that's a singer, just ignore me. Uh, you know, out at Square Enix. It's not his fault as a mid-tier developer that they don't re-release a game, right? But I do think that these publishers and development companies should be looking at the marketplace. If somebody is jacking up the price of Pokemon Leaf Green, right? And you want people to be able to well, you see there's a, a demand for that. Why don't you re-release that game for 10 or $15 on the Switch eShop? Why don't you re-release that game even in a limited run style physical cartridge for modern hardware? Why not? Because the alternative is people are either making money off the back of your product by reselling it for a thousand percent of its original value, or people are emulating your game anyway. They're just going to take it. That's what gamers do. And that's not a knock on them. It's, hey, listen, I'm willing to give you my money, but if I have no way to, I want to play the game either way. There's thousands, maybe millions of people willing to do that every single you know year with games that they can't get access to anymore. But that methodology, you know, the old what we thought we were going to see with the PS2 on PS4 program, what we have been seeing with the Xbox backwards compatibility program. Yes, a lot of it is for show. Yes, a lot of it is for brownie points, but preserving games is important. Being able to play these experiences later is important, and people shouldn't accept not being able to. It would be absolute BS if next year you couldn't watch Blade Runner on any streaming platform or on any disc just because it was old. Nobody would sell it anymore. We don't really see this in the movie marketplace with things that are critically renowned or had high sales, but for some reason it's commonplace in gaming. My opinion at the end of the day with this, old games are not good because they're old. I'm not a hipster. That's just not how it works. There's really no black and white on this, and I think that people should make up their own opinion on what they actually play and what they enjoy. I think it's annoying that there is a trend on either side to over-glorify something just because it's old or over-hate it, and I think it's off-putting to a lot of consumers just where the market's gone with this. I want to be able to play my games that I buy now in 10 years, in 15 years, in 20 years, and have them work and run the same way and be good, if not better. I think that that's what we should be demanding as a market space, as consumers, and as people who keep this technology going, who pay to keep the lights on at game development companies because we buy the games. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'm very interested to hear your thoughts. Who do you think the responsibility of this falls on? Do you think it falls on consumers to demand more? Do you think it falls on uh, developers to actually re-release these games? Do you think that old games are bad and I'm wrong? I don't know. I'm interested to hear because there's a lot of uh, dissenting opinions whenever I put up something like this, but regardless, it's the internet. That's how it works. Have a fantastic day, everyone. Please be sure to check out the descriptions or description with the links down below inside of it, including Degenerate Plays, where we play through a mixture of old and new games, whatever suits our fancy, with you guys hanging out, having fun. Right now we are playing Duke Nukem 3D, uh, the 20th anniversary world tour. T and I are starting Limbo very soon. Uh, Nate and I are going to be starting Elden Ring, which is very new. And we are playing Ghostbusters the game. So lots of fun stuff over there, old and new. I love good games. Doesn't matter when they're from. As always, everyone, stay shway.